the mind's search and hunger for knowledge is never ending. So when the mind gets interested in awakening, Typically what is happening is that the mind goes on a pilgrimage, harvesting knowledge The mind wants to be certain First of all, that it knows what is going to happen, because the mind, the mind does not like uncertainty. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the reason why There is so much fear in the human being because the mind wants to know and in these days where, where we are bombarded with information about <laughs> so-called news from all parts of the world. In these times there are certainly a lot to be worried about. That is for the mind. So the mind gets interested in this awakening stuff. There is a sense of this could be it. But what the mind does not know is that the freedom, and that it, by that I mean the freedom from fear, that that freedom lies beyond the mind. So for some people, they, got, they get stuck. And that harvesting of knowledge, that ends up being a new form of bondage. The mind wants to be certain about what awakening entails. But the mind can never know. The mind can never, ever know what is outside itself. The mind cannot know what it means to be living spontaneously.
because the mind is a sort of a controlling mechanism. And that is why it can end up being a trap, continually demanding to understand intellectually what awakening is. But awakening is out of intellectual understanding. So there will be a point where all intellectual understanding is to be left behind. Or perhaps just simply see it for what it is. And in that clear seeing, understanding, that the intellectual understanding will be a a limit, will be the limiting factor, will be what prevents the final step. And here's the funny part. After awakening, we are absolutely still hmm, able. We are still able to make use of intellectual understanding. So it it really does not go anywhere. <laughs> but the intellectual understanding changes. The nature of it changes. And the reason for that is that up until awakening, a part of the intellectual understanding is my identity, who I take myself to be, my self-image is intellectual understanding. But how can I be intellectual understanding? <laughs> How is that possible? That is, of course, not possible. But up until awakening, we are lost within intellectual understanding. Ideas, beliefs about who we think we are, who we take ourselves to be. I can still make use of intellectual understanding, but I know what it is. And I know how far I can make use of it. I know the boundaries of the intellectual understanding and beyond that, lies wisdom. That's a different kind of knowing. That has nothing to do with intellectual understanding. There is nothing to defend. <laughs> Intellectual 
Understanding, on the other hand, needs being defended. Hang around, you will eventually bump into someone who has a different point of view than yours. I'm pretty sure that you <laughs> experience that on a daily basis. And when that happens, it is simply just a result of different kinds of intellectual understanding, challenging each other. And there is nothing wrong about that. But the dilemma emerges when we are invested with a sense of self in the intellectual understanding, because that means that if someone is challenging my intellectual understanding, they are actually challenging myself. They are attacking my identity. That is, of course, up until awakening. And that is why there is a lot of fear involved in identification with intellectual understanding. Because there is a lot of different ways that reality can be interpreted. And that is what intellectual understanding really is. An interpretation. Are you an interpretation? <laughs> of course you are not an interpretation. You are not limited to any intellectual description. That is putting a straitjacket on yourself. Awakening is the most valuable in the universe. You could find professors, you could find Nobel Prize winners that do not know anything about awakening, but they have an incredible amount of intellectual understanding. But they are poor. There is a different kind of knowing. A knowing that does not have to be defended. And yes, I can make use of words and descriptions. I can paint poetic pictures, I can make use of intellectual understanding, trying to describe, to pave a way. But there will, there will always come a time, come a place, be a point where the intellectual understanding has to be abandoned or at least the identification with it. And then suddenly it might dawn I am that. 
And then, what a fool I've been, defending an idea. Such ignorance. Ignorance on a very high intellectual level. <laughs> All that I'm trying to say is that true, true knowing, true knowing lies beyond intellectual understanding, and that you might become trapped within your pride, being proud of your intellectual understanding. I know that I am not being very flattering here. But that is not my job to be. My job is to wake you up. Out of the dream world. The dream world of the intellectual understanding. And here is the funny part. As long as you are only interested in the intellectual understanding, you will continue to bump into boundaries, becoming increasingly frustrated because it seems impossible to venture on beyond a certain point. And then you will encounter dead ends. That might actually be what eventually will awaken you. The frustration of the dead ends. The intellectual dead ends. Then you awaken. And you are being freed up. And then suddenly, the possibility of expanding intellectual understanding becomes limitless. Seen in the clear light of our awakening, knowing what intellectual understanding is capable of and what it is not capable of frees you to venture on no more dead ends it is actually what you are looking for but it lies it lies beyond identification with intellectual understanding. You need to have the courage to break free from the change of intellectual understanding. Then you also discover what true intelligence is. You discover that you are not intelli intelligent. <laughs> you do not possess intelligence. You are intelligence itself. 
There is not a someone who is intelligent. That is the limiting factor. That is the boundary. The idea that you think that you have some kind of intelligence. That you are a someone who has intelligence. You are intelligence itself. Break free. Don't be restricted by dogmatic belief systems. You don't have to destroy your old heroes. All of that has been stepping stones. But there are no more intellectual stepping stones to be threat. To be threat. Threat. <laughs> Can't remember. It's time. And you know it already. Of course you do. <laughs> but a part of you is desperately trying to avoid seeing the truth. You are afraid of being ridiculed. <laughs> ridiculed by whom? Ignorance. Ignorance will always ridicule. But who cares? Ignorance has mm, the tendency to gather in groups of ignorance. And they might be pointing fingers. But who cares? Who cares, my friend? It is time to wake up. And if you are still listening to me, it is most certainly time for you. Where will you hide now? You can run, but you cannot hide. You already know too much. You have already seen too much. It is impossible to fall back into complete ignorance. That luxury is no longer there. And of course it's not a luxury, that's just a way of saying. The ignorant life is not worth living. 
the aware life is everything. We are the one life experiencing itself as this. We are being itself, falling in love with being itself. Silence, stillness, a different kind of knowing. Everything you have ever longed for is already here. Seemingly covered up by ignorance. But we are unveiling it together. We are shining a light on being itself. Thank you, wherever you are. I shall be back.